it was found that NH2 actually carbon can donate to nitrogen with one coordination bond or with two coordination bonds. This was also shown. Then this is also possible. One NH2 actually carbon and one PR3 species donating to a nitrogen which has got a positive charge, formal positive charge. At the same time, uh, two lone pairs. I think I am not too much audible through the mic. Okay, uh, this this kind of species was also reported with uh, coordination bond between carbon and nitrogen. Here, carbon phosphorus as well as carbon nitrogen. Likewise, there are several species of this type uh, being introduced. Then we realized that should we not consider a nitrogen center and consider alenes. Alenes with a nitrogen center, especially when it is positively charged. Uh, should they be not be linear, uh, then we, when we did computational analysis, they were all bent. Uh, experimental data is also available. This is the data. They are bent. And this is a very famous compound called metformin. A tablet of metformin I consumed today morning before coming here. This is anti-diabetic drug. It is also carrying a nitrogen center with a bent uh, lean-like character in its uh, hydrochloride salt form. Likewise, uh, lots of uh, compounds can be considered in medicinal chemistry and in organic chemistry. Considering all those, we wanted to see can we synthesize more compounds belonging to this class. Yes, it turned out that we wanted to synthesize this. First thing to show is that this is the energy minimum on the potential in the surface. There are no other alternatives to this. Uh, this is alternative uh, representation of the same compound. But this can show 1, 3 hydrogen shift with only 3 to 5 kilocalories per mole. So to avoid that, you instead of placing hydrogen here, you place a methyl group here. Then you, this is the alternative tautomerism that is possible, but it requires up to 14 to 18 kilocalories. This can be avoided and this can also be avoided uh, this is not possible and this can be avoided when there is a methyl group here. So taking that as a clue, we wanted to synthesize this compound. I am a quantum chemist. Then I did not uh, know how to synthesize. When I asked my organic chemistry colleagues, they said we are all busy. So you do your own job. Then we started uh, synthesis. My institute gave me an organic lab. It is kind enough to give me this uh, organic lab, uh, rotor vapor and all the minimum facilities required. So we started synthesizing these compounds with the help of uh, starting with this chloro derivative, condensing with uh, simple amine here and uh, synthesizing this species and then showing that once you methyl it here, the methyl group goes to the nitrogen, not to this center and once you have this amine, you can treat it with uh, corresponding uh, thio systems and then you can convert into uh, the this kind of system after treating with ammonium acetate finally we can generate this we synthesized this compound and we got a pretty good um, result for your good years then with correspondingly we synthesized uh, uh, this compound with one side pyridyl and another side uh, anhydrocyclic carbene starting from this thiol and then methylated Further methylate it and then go to the uh, condensation, finally coming up with this particular salt, which is uh, more crystallizable. Whereas this is not so very crystallizable, this P of 6 salt happened to be more crystallizable compound. Similarly, we synthesize this compound where there are two pyridyl groups and uh, pyridylidine groups uh, on the two sides of the nitrogen, and this nitrogen carries a positive charge formally, but it carries excess electron density also and it has got uh, two lone pairs. Having synthesized these compounds, we went ahead and uh, established their crystal structures and then found, uh, of course, the molecular orbital analysis to show the sigma type of lone pair and the phi type of lone pair and all other uh, quantum chemical analysis and we published these results. We did not stop here, we established, we, we modulated this side and on this side uh, and then we uh, synthesized many compounds and some of them are showing anti-malarial effect, some of them are showing anti-leishmanial effect. 
I shall come to that later. These are all the quantum chemical analysis. We reported a lot of things can be done. Energy of homo, proton affinity, complexation with BH3. All sorts of things can be done. And uh, we indeed could establish that there are uh, excess electron density at the central nitrogen. Uh, it is not highly basic. If it is highly basic, it cannot be used as a drug. It is good thing that it is not having the um, uh, highly basic character. So this uh, drug metformin, this drug prodonal, is anti-malarial, cyclogonal, which is anti-malarial, hematidine, which is antacid, tebrotidine, which is also an antacid, morexidine, piclozidine, and then these are all the drugs which are already known to carry carbon nitrogen coordination bond. This was all happy news, but when we wanted to see, are these the only samples? We, are there any inorganic compounds belonging to this? We found this penta-coordinated silicon system and this uh, tetra-coordinated boron system. They also show the uh, necessary carbon-nitrogen coordination bond character. These are all the molecular orbital details of these compounds. Then we went ahead and synthesized and designed this compound, wanted to show whether there is coordination chemistry here, and we proved that it is not possible there in the neutral state. And then we looked at these compounds with uh, triazines. They are indeed having carbon nitrogen coordination bond. So we are continuing work in this direction. While doing so, we realized that some of these compounds are very useful, not only in terms of the uh, medicinal chemistry, they are also useful in terms of the phase transfer catalysis. Phase transfer catalysis where the, the catalyst takes the compound anion from the aqueous phase to the organic phase and then the reaction can be carried out. Uh, for that, catalysts can be designed. Such species were already uh, reported. Then we <coughs> looked at the literature. We found that these kind of compounds are already being used as catalysts for the conversion of uh, this kind of simple chemistry. This chemistry cannot be done without the help of phase transfer catalyst. It can be done with the help of the phase transfer catalyst. And we are special with this kind of NL2 type of phase transfer catalyst. Then we realized that this is the fact that uh, a catalyst is required to perform this NNCO selective nickel addition reaction as with uh, sufficiently uh, not so very good yield, but some amount of NNCO select uh, excess. This is possible with NR4 type of uh, catalyst. <coughs> you replace this NR4 type of catalyst with our NL2 type of catalyst, yield increase was observed as well as NNCO merit excess was also observed. Thus, this kind of NL2 type of catalyst are better uh, phase transfer catalysts. Similarly, in the case of this example, NNCO selective benzylation reaction, it was found that NR4 type of phase transfer catalyst produced 87% yield, but the product was a racemic mixture, whereas NL2 type of catalyst produced 88% yield and 97% of enantiomeric excess. First, uh, another one more example I will show you. So this is uh, asymmetric alkylation of alkane sulfonate. For so this particular reaction, uh, here you can create a, a center like this. This uh, reaction cannot be done without catalyst. This fresh transfer catalyst is useful. This is the catalyst. Yield is only 34%. But if you use this, this reaction, reagent uh, as a catalyst, you can realize 87% yield and 92% enantiomeric uh, excess. Plus, the compounds of NL2 type are useful uh, not only in medicinal chemistry but also in phase transfer catalysis. This was all good news, uh, but uh, our uh, students as well as my colleagues were not happy. These are all, this is all theoretical chemistry. This is all, okay, you have proven. There is, you have shown the compound. You have uh, uh, crystallized also, synthesized also. But where is medicinal chemistry? If you design a new drug from this concept, 
this was the idea they wanted. Then we looked at the electrostatic surface of some of the well-known compounds and then some of the bloated gluonide uh, uh, urea, GTU derivatives. We found that these two surfaces are very similar when these two may be behaving, uh, showing similar pharmacophoric character, then we replace this kind of side chains with this kind of uh, side chains, and then we synthesize many compounds. So when we, when we did that, we had to show the, uh, this is the synthetic route, then we showed the molecular docking results, whether they are really fitting inside the cavity of an enzyme, and then once we proved that, then we found out the variations with reference to the pharmacophoric features and then QSAR analysis, we did all those and we also did molecular dynamics analysis to show that our compounds can selectively bind to wild type P of DHFR, quadruple mutant DHFR, double mutant DHFR, but does not bind to the human DHFR. This is the desired property. Uh, from molecular dynamics we could establish. Then we went to the biology laboratory. In, live op in vitro biology, we, mm, we submitted uh, uh, this compound and we studied whether NADPH was utilized or not. On that basis, we found that our compounds are very promising that they are blocking the utilization of NADPH since they are showing the desired biochemical activity. Then we went to in vivo activity studies also, then we submitted about 23 compounds into 3 animals, uh, so many, 69 animals were studied with our compounds. Out of that we found that 6 compounds were promising. We continued the study up to the anti-malarial effects in the animals, mice models up to D plus 14, that means 14 days, we observed the comp uh, uh, six compounds were promising. We continued the observation of 2D plus 60. And the 60th, uh, during this period, between 14 and 60, five, in case of five compounds, the animals developed a uh, recurrence of the malaria. So, the, the animals died. So, at least one compound we found that after 60 days also, the animal had its regular uh, happy life. So, uh, uh, taking this as a clue, we are now able to establish that there is at least one compound we could find which can show anti-malarial effect in terms of removing the malarial effect as well as uh, producing a recovery for, for the animal's life. This is, these are the, some of the structures of the compound. These are the ICCC values like that. Now, I would like to come to a slide where I would like to describe the controversy. There is a controversy which is in progress right now in chemical uh, uh, research. Why do we write, uh, write an arrow? Writing an arrow between carbon and carbon and carbon nitrogen, is it really uh, worthwhile? Can't we explain the observed uh, phenomena, the experimental observed phenomena using simply already known models? So then this group of scientists are suggesting that uh, let us have fewer arrows, let us don't draw arrow between every main group element, that's not uh, the right thing to do. Existing models probably are sufficient. But this group of scientists uh, led by Professor Franking and uh, Professor Dr. Toner is also here, uh, they are uh, suggesting that yes, there is a case for more arrows. So this model may be sufficient, but they say that, you know, this model is better and this gives us more innovative uh, ideas and more uh, challenges. The moment you see that uh, we can provoke many organic chemists by writing like this and thus we can uh, trigger a lot of research on this and thus uh, maybe I, I, am, I am on this side of the controversy, but let us see how this will uh, end up in the towards the end. So this is, uh, so in conclusion I would like to say that quantum chemical methods can be utilized to understand the chemical bonding. Then we can design compounds and prove that chemical bonding is having some kind of uh, 
validity and possible coordination interaction can be established. But we can also go to the medicinal chemistry, we can also look towards the uh, catalytic applications of this class of compounds. These are some of the publications which emerged, and this is a group of people who are working on this topic. Yeah, thank you very much to show us the concept from going from the bonding to a um, new product. Professor Bandla. Uh, are your compounds stable uh, in atmosphere or uh, they have to be prepared under nitrogen? No, no, they are in preparation synthesis part we take nitrogen condition, but once the compound is synthesized, it is very stable. And which solvent do you use for this? Simple BMS uh, or DCTHF. Uh, if water is used, for example, if some nitronium ion is generated in water, ah. then what do you expect? The water will not work. Will not work. Thank you. Other questions? Yes. Um, you made a very good point in saying that uh, sometimes you need new concepts to discuss bonding to, well, open your mind or whatsoever. But if I see this uh, representation of these compounds with the arrows, then I see if I have a coordinative bond, then I would expect chemistry that is, ex well, related to this coordination change. Like you draw transition metals with complexes with coordinative bonds, and one of the most prominent reactions is that you can exchange ligands. Well, the chemistry you presented us is basically you make these guanidine derivatives and use them as well, more or less weakly nucleophilic catalysts. So uh, what you are making use of is the lone pair of nitrogen. And in this context, I'm asking myself, what is why do you need this this uh, new concept? Because uh, using the, uh, the conventional representation, if you just draw another resonance structure, you have a lone pair of nitrogen, and using the other one, it's the same. So what, what does it bring in this case? Well, uh, when there is one lone pair on nitrogen, that's okay. But there are two lone pairs on this nitrogen. <coughs> How do we explain that if there are two lone pairs? Uh, it is formally having positive charge, uh, as well as two lone pairs. One is sigma type, the other is a pi type. And they are very well uh, recognized in terms of they, they can form indeed uh, two coordination bonds originating from uh, that nitrogen, uh, that was also established. So taking that as a clue, the, the preference towards the arrow representation is more, uh, at least in our examples. Uh, in metformin, still we are work, trying to work, and then you mentioned about the exchange of these ligands, is uh, one of the things. We are uh, trying to work on that. We propose that when these compounds are showing therapeutic effect, plausibly this kind of exchange is happening inside the body. That we could not establish till now. This is one of our hypotheses which we could not provide any proof. Okay. Maybe to add to this excellent explanation already, we started with it carbodiphosphorates and sort of had this idea about the donor acceptable. We would have never dared to propose it carbodicabine without having the bonding concept. And so this sort of having a carbon-carbon donor acceptor bond, that was very provocative. Yes. And without the carbodiphosphorane, this would have never been accepted in the community. And then two weeks later, Bertrand actually made it and it looked like, like it was proposed. But this question about the ligand exchange that, that is sort of there since the beginning of the concept and I hope that someone will finally be able to do it. But many of the other chemistry can be well explained as, as in also in your case with this don't accept the bonding. Maybe one question, so um, because in, in our cases often the second protonation at proton affinity was a very good measure of is it a cabine or a carbone. That might be a bit more tricky for the cationic species. Do you see second proton affinities in your case as being valuable? No, second proton affinity is very low. It is about 160, even less than 160 kilocalories. Uh, that we think is the real reason why they are safe in human beings. If it is highly proton, if these compounds are having a high proton affinity, I would not dare to make it a drug out of it. Yeah, that's why the carbones are not used in that respect. Yeah. Thank you.
there are no further urgent questions, then I would say that we thank both the speakers of this session very much. With this, we come to the end of technical session 6. I thank Professor Robert Baker for chairing the session and the invited speakers, Professor Verma and Professor Bharatam for their lectures. I now invite you all for the lunch which is being served in the lawns. We shall reassemble at 3 p.m. for the next technical session. There is an urgent announcement for the delegates who have to present their posters in the research category. Kindly display them in the hall near the lawns. Thank you. I now hand over to the chairperson for the for the proceedings of the session. Uh, professor Dilip Kumar is professor at Bits Pilani, a very famous institute in Rajasthan. He has published more than 150 research papers and uh, many awards and honors are to his credit. His uh, interest in synthetic organic chemistry. I invite Professor Dilip Kumar to give his talk. You are given, I think, 20 minutes. Eh? 20 minutes. Professor Dilip Kumar will be speaking on efficient access to drug-like nitrogen heterocycles using diarrhea iodonium salts. Thank you, sir. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, at the outset, uh, I would like to thank respected Professor Bansal, Madam Rakhi and organizing team for giving me this opportunity to share some of the recent findings and uh, today I will be speaking on uh, how uh, we have in the last 5-6 years prepared drug-like molecules along with the, our target is to identify anti-cancer activity uh, agents wherein selectively such molecule can be toxic to tumor cell versus normal cell. Uh, We end with this big first slide. Can you put it? Thank you. Uh, so, using uh, <coughs> particularly how using diarrheal aluminum salts, we are making drug like molecules that I will share the chemistry. Uh, you know that while making uh, anti-cancer agents, uh, our target is fibulin assembly, polymerization, depolymerization, wherein we are making indole-based compounds which are natural alkaloids and uh, the other projects which are porphyrin based, uh, we are looking for uh, making efficient photosensitizer which can selectively target to tumor cells. And while making these molecules, uh, we have effectively utilized these hyperalent iodine molecules to generate a diverse library of molecules and uh, recently uh, we have uh, working on these type of 
diiral adenine salts and their uh, chemistry and so why diiral adenine salts if you see that these are quite stable easy to prepare and these are uh, inert compound one can make a diverse library which are uh, versatile building blocks to make uh, different type of molecules and interestingly uh, these compounds when react with it generates forms a carbon carbon or carbon hetero bonds and which is aryl iodine and which can be reoxidized to generate these uh, diiral adenine salts so economically these are viable substrates and uh, high electrophilic they are aryl source and uh, requires normally mild condition to make this carbon carbon or carbon hetero atom bonds so you see this uh, initial finding uh, by brengo group they found that uh, these diiral adenium salts forms this kind of copper complex it's different chemistry from diiral uh, um, uh, uh, this uh, azoleum salts it's not like uh, arene source wherein there was a lack of reproducibility in the reactions and after that they used uh, pure water instead of uh, so they found that reaction is rate is slow down and this observation led us to uh, utilize various metal and that enabled them to identify that copper one which accelerate could act as a efficient catalyst in uh, uh, decomposition of diiral adenium chlorides now this observation uh, in early uh, by other group also uh, roberts and co-workers they also found that copper 1 and copper 2 could be uh, salts could be efficiently could catalyze this decomposition of diiral adenium salts whereas uh, in c2 copper 2 get reduced to copper 1 and generates kind of uh, a aryl copper species and later on uh, lockhart group also found that in the diiral adenium salt uh, decomposition which catalyzed cuprous iodide and forms a kind of aryl copper 3 species which is highly reactive so intrinsicity of this but during this time since uh, there was not uh, many efficient methods were available to make such compound synthesis was a bit difficult therefore uh, uh, recently in last 5 7 years uh, many uh, uh, um, elegant chemistry has come up with uh, interesting uh, applications of such compounds and which can be made from arene and uh, and iodobenzene so depending on the nature of the starting materials one can have a diverse library of uh, symmetrical and symmetrical diiral adenine salts and also the other method which involves generation of this intermediate hypervalent iodine diestoxy and which on coupling with arene gives diiral adenine salt with tosylate counterline and very recently you see that by taking different arenes and uh, molecular iodine one can make interesting these diiral adenine salts so with these uh, versatile uh, methods which are preparation is operation is simple without metal ligand and base free and there is no pre activation of such reagents is required in the many reactions and always one can make in high yield uh, such compounds so with this uh, and very recently may uh, these diiral adenium salt chemistry some, uh, in this review article where these salts uh, chemo selectively reacts with nitrile and forms kind of nitrilium ion and which can be trapped by various nucleophiles and even the sensitive functional group amino and others are spared in presence of this nitrile and you see that in the reaction it forms uh, this uh, arene copper 3 species and which reacts with the nitrile to generate this uh, aryl nitrilium cation 
and releases copper 1 and which can be efficiently coupled with various carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, nucleophile to assemble diverse set of uh, heterocycle uh, ring systems. This one you see that in this review article where copper is uh, effectively utilized in uh, CH arylations and this uh, asymmetric arylations and formation of these carbocycles and such type of esters. With this in uh, uh, the with elegant uh, interesting chemistry of these diaryluminum salts, what we found that such type of oxidizoles exhibits interesting anti-cancer activities and there are many lead molecules where these diaryl or benzofused like this tafamidis uh, lead molecules uh, with interesting activity. Uh, the conventional synthesis, you know, the, it's a difficult to make a, uh, a diverse library of such compounds where every time we need to take such uh, in the starting material. But here what we found that uh, simply by uh, generating anion at this C2 position, how we functionalize using this uh, diaryl adenium salts in, in presence of copper, uh, that is uh, simply in presence of copper bromide, DMSO, lithium t butoxide at room temperature. Within 15 minutes, it gives uh, the two aryl uh, oxidizers uh, in good yield. Now, after having uh, optimized these reaction condition, we found that the scope of these reactions, you can see that a set of library, this aryl ring has come from the diaryl adenium salts and having uh, substitution at para, meta and uh, also a heterocyclic ring having a sensitive sulfur which also effectively prepared in 85% yield and then in case of uh, aliphatic uh, side chain this uh, reaction condition were uh, efficient to generate uh, these compounds. Next reaction condition were extended to benzo substituted and efficiently we could make a diverse library of two substituted, two aryl benzoxazoles with different substitution uh, ortho and para positions. However, in case of when we extended similar reaction condition to these thiodiazoles, in this case we failed to generate uh, the corresponding aryllated thiodiazoles. What we found that by increasing the equivalence of lithium t butoxide and solvent DMF, we could succeed in making a set of uh, thiodazole molecules. Uh, again, uh, we tried to make corresponding uh, benzothiazoles under similar condition, but here we found that DMF and DMSO both resulted in a complex mixture, but what we could see that when dioxin used as a solvent in microwave, it led us to generate a diverse library of these Arylated benzothiazoles, and in case of DMF and DMSO, what we found to find that they, uh, this ring was opening up to generate uh, uh, two amino thiophenols. And uh, now, uh, by using this uh, unsymmetrical and kind of spherically hindered demanding group like mesetyl, and always this aryl ring is transferred to the corresponding uh, these azoles and one can have a diverse library wherein uh, electron donating, withdrawing and ortho nitro symmetrically like dichloro such compound can be prepared and always uh, this aryl ring will be transferred to these azoles. Now what happens that uh, initial deprotonation with copper forms a copper azoyl copper 1 species and which undergoes oxidative uh, addition to this diaryl adenium salts generates this reactive copper 3 species and which undergoes reductive elimination to uh, gen regenerate this copper 1 and corresponding aryllated azoles. Uh, the application, synthetic application we could extend in making tefan this in achieving this synthesis and which is reported in four step overall yield is 27%, but our method involves the formation of this symmetrical uh, diaryl adenium salt with bromide counter anion, and we could make this and subsequent hydrolysis 
generated tougher medicine, say 67 percent in. The next uh, application of such uh, uh, iodine salts we utilized in aryanation of indole, and you see that two aryanated indoles, these are like uh, known as tubulin inhibitors and as a ligands, also as a staining agent and some as a modulator and estrogen receptor. With this importance of aryanated indoles, what we could find that in the literature, the aryanation at two position involves the protection of this nitrogen with the pyrimidine and having uh, aryl bromides and these aryl silicon derivatives and using various catalysis and boronic acid, boronic acid and then but in all these cases this indole nitrogen is protected and which requires uh, at the end deep protection to generate these aryl indoles. But our strategy which involves that we wanted to aryllate indole by using a directing group and with 3 NH so which reduces these extra step and also how we can see diaryl iodine salts are uh, soluble in water how we can use this chemistry to aerate under aqueous condition. So with this in mind and after uh, screening various catalysis and solvents we found that palladium acetate in water within one hour it produces two aryl in dole in 91 percent in. So uh, then having uh, a set of diaryl and iodine salts we effectively prepared these two aryl in doles and having uh, various ester and halide nitro such functional groups and which can be utilized further enhancing the complexity of these aryl indoles even making these uh, uh, indole aryl iodine salts we could make these this indole class of compounds and then having uracil also we could transfer in the two positions so we could make a uh, uh, interesting library of these aryl indoles Next, what we could find that when we have taken uh, this 3,5 dicarboxylic acid, in that case the two position got aryllated and it goes under decarboxylation. However, this remains intact and unreactive under these conditions. But in case of pyrrole, instead of monoaryllation, it goes to diaryllated pyrrole. Whereas in those three acetic acid, the carboxylic acid doesn't undergo decarboxylation and it remains intact and upon extension of this chain to butyric and uh, such acid we also could arrive at two positions even the tryptamine also act as a like a directing group and the sensitive functionality remains intact and one can make good library of such molecules now while uh, the Ultimately, we making this ortho nitro substituted diaryl aluminium salts. We prepared this ortho nitro substituted uh, indole 3 acetic acid, which upon reduction and activation of this carboxylic acid, it leads in two step these pollen molecules, which is uh, a lead anti cancer agent. Uh, mechanistically, we could establish that initially this palladium forms this indole carboxylate. Uh, indi independently isolating this intermediate and which upon also confirmed by NMR this uh, uh, disappearance of this peak and additionally peak for this methyl group in the NMR spectra and also that when it was subjected this palladium complex to this uh, diaryl adenium salts in the initial uh, after 10 minutes subjected to mass uh, analysis and we observed that the mass corresponding to this palladium 4 species which also and followed by decarboxylation it goes to 2 indole. Now the how the initially it forms this uh, this palladium carboxylate which undergoes oxidative cyclization to palladium 4 which from decarboxylation generated palladium 2 and uh, it continued the cycle. Next was that uh, how this uh, diaryl iodine salts we can utilize in the formation of carbon oxygen bond 
and with the importance of this heterocyclic uh, aryl esters like carboxylate, uh, this indole aryl esters which, uh, which are CD38 inhibitors and these are very interesting molecules. With this in mind, uh, and literature method, you can see that this involves that uh, various activation of this acid and phenol and aryl boronic acid and aryl formates in different catalysis and always this indole is protected. So by using diaryl adenium salts, uh, that without protection, how we can achieve these aryl indole carboxylic acids? So simply after screening various uh, uh, solvents, we found that without uh, any catalysis in DMF within 12 hours, it gives 80% yield of these aryl indole carboxylates. And from, by using uh, diverse aryl adenium salts in DNF at 100 degrees C, we could make a diverse set of these uh, indole aryl carboxylates and even other heterocycle like furan, uh, pyrone and then pyridine also we could uh, arylate uh, in very good yield. And this uh, aryl carboxylate upon further oxidation of uh, this CC bond can be prepared and which leads to a kind of linear molecule which uh, are, are very good DNA interpolators. So possibly that initially how because the, we found that DMF is very critical for this reaction. So therefore possibility that is involved in the formation of kind of six number transition state which uh, uh, upon generating triphlic acid forms a T set intermediate which undergoes one to migration to generate uh, aryl iodide and corresponding uh, 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 aryl carboxylate. The next finding is that where we have utilized in the formation of regioselectively oxygen versus carbon and you can see that uh, in these compounds these four aryloxyquinolines as well as two aryloxyquinolines these are kinase inhibitors and these antibiotics wherein uh, the nitrogen is n aryylated so formation of n aryylation versus O aryylation is quite interesting to generate such type of uh, diverse library of molecules. So simply using potassium carbonate within 5 minutes and this diaryl adenium salt effectively transferred this aryl ring to, uh, to generate these 4 aryloxyquinolines. So we prepared with different substituted uh, uh, quinoline aryl ethers and even at three position bromo and when we took the two quinolone in these cases we prepared in good yield such these set of compounds uh, wherein and further uh, using uh, these bromo derivatives we effectively form these benzofuran quinolines and these angular molecules uh, uh, one can make a different set of compounds by using different aryylated adenine salts. The next is uh, that uh, when we used uh, a base after screening various different bases and we found that simply in NH water and within 30 minutes upon exposure to microwave it gives 90% aryylated 4 kinolones. So with this condition uh, also we found that when the counter nine change from tosylate, bromo, PF6 and BF4, triplet was the most suitable uh, diaryl adenium salt wherein the yield is 91%. So with this suitable counter nine and having a diverse set of diaryl adenium salts, we could make a library of these n aryylated quinolones visioselectively without any trace of over-related product. And when the two quinolone was taken in that, it gives uh, corresponding uh, n aryylated quinolones and we can have a good library of these compounds we prepared in very good year. Okay. So next is uh, some of the interesting molecule we could aryylate. These are acridone. However, we find that interesting that 
in case of benzene is alone both the arrangings would be transferred and be prepared in such compound in 70% clean so the other interesting thing is that when we are taken these uh, quinolones uh, substituted at two position in that case instead of n arylation it goes to o arylation and we made a library of such compounds where two substituted four uh, aryloxy quinolones we could make it and which such compound these are good precursor to generate such dna intercalating agents uh, so overall uh, we could effectively utilize these diaryladenin salts when it is potassium carbonate toluene gives Uh, this kind of ethers and four aryloxy quinoline with potassium carbonate dnf nh water which leads to n aryloxy to generate corresponding uh, quinoline uh, quinolone ethers and reaction is equally extendable to gram scale synthesis and uh, what happens that in case of polar protic solvent this this is b stabilized whereas polar protic solvent like water Through the formation of hydrogen on bond with this oxygen exclusively, the this nitrogen gets aryloated. And once it is aryloated, this forms a P-shaped intermediate, which undergoes one to aryl migration by generating aryl iodine and corresponding uh, aryl oxyquinolines. The 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 next application that we found such kind of uh, like in yesterday's lecture that. nitrogen heterocyclic uh, carbenes which are very good uh, precursor to generate carbenes and such type of imidazolium and benzene imidazolium salts so we found that well how we can make it and these compounds are reported that in presence of base can be a effective source of these carbenes and which have been utilized in the uh, inverse uh, uh, reactivity like Umplong reagents and other coupling reactions. So how here we have by using copper triclate and diaryl adenine salt, such type of uh, one, two, four triazoles, and uh, we have prepared a set of library wherein these aryloated uh, 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 one, two triazoles we could make it with diverse func aryl functionalities in the. However, in case of with the Iodine salt with bromide counter anion, we could not succeed in making corresponding uh, triazole with bromide counter anion. Uh, the synthetic application we could find that uh, these aryloated triazole uh, with triplet counter anion effectively can produce such type of alpha hydroxy ketones, and which is uh, as reported in the literature involves this uh, formation of. carbon intermediate to generate this alpha hydroxy ketones uh, the next by taking these aryloated triazoles aryloated triazoles we could make corresponding uh, cn aryloated uh, triazoles in diverse set of uh, these one to diaryloated triazole so the formation uh, this Uh, initially either by the substrate reduction <coughs> this copper triplet reduces to copper 1 and which upon oxidative addition to diaryl adenine salts generates this uh, aryl copper 3 species and which forms this uh, copper 3 reactive species undergoes uh, reductive elimination to generate copper 1 and corresponding tri uh, aryloated triazole 1 to 4 triazoles initial uh, we could find that such compounds are very effective uh, with the photophysical studies of these triazole we found that could absorb in band in this region 290 to 330 nanometers and also showed red shifted with 10 to 15 nanometer and with this uh, uh, with this fluorescence emission in this 350 to 550 nanometer we could find that uh, and uh, is stroke shift also we observed in aqueous medium and which uh, which gives us opportunity that such compound we can explore them as a biological stain or other other technological applications <coughs> overall uh, by using such uh, uh, efficient library of diaryl adenine salts we could 
gives a diverse set of molecules where in 5 6 membered heterocycle we use selectively and very simple and economically one can make such uh, diverse library of these compound which are quite stable and in reaction these generated iodo arene can be recycled and in can be reused to make a uh, such compounds uh this uh, uh the compound there is uh, mostly iodine chemistry is working manish and santosh is both of them are participant of this conference venkat has worked on port firing project and vinitu is working on body key and also the i thank the former students who have contributed to this iodine chemistry also i thank uh, my collaborator from uh, different universities and of course this funding agency dst csir dbt bits and ugc uh, finally i thank you for your kind attention Good afternoon, all of you, uh, uh, faculty members, and uh, delegates. Uh, myself, Santosh B. Khandagale from Bits Pilani. Uh, I want to share uh, my research work uh, we are doing recently now. Uh, the uh, efficient synthesis and expression of photophysical properties uh, of hydro aryl superdel body. Uh, before that one, I want to uh, introduce uh, the introduction of the body. Fee. What is by body fee and that term is that that. Dipyramidal. It is a two parallel uh, units are joined by a uh, in is the hybridized methyl group, and this is a uh, analogs of the uh, uh, boron complex of the dipyramidal. This is a structure uh, from dipyramidal and uh, dipyramidal boron fluorides. For this one, uh, this uh, boron complex you can tune the electronic properties uh, by using this uh, active alpha position, beta position, or meso position. This body is uh, showing various applications. Most of all, these uh, molecules are the building block of the uh, supra molecules, uh, like the corals, uh, metal of porphyrins, and the calx porphyrin. That uh, this calx porphyrin mo molecule is uh, as a uh, scavenger, metal scavenger for uh, isomers of the uh, metal complexes. And this is uh, porphyrin is used as a photosynthesizer, as ideal photosynthesizer for the uh, various applications like photodynamic therapy and. Uh, uh this molecules are like expanded porphyrin that is used as a uh, uh, light harvesting molecules for the making the solar cells similarly uh, this mol uh, later molecule is showing some ion ion sensing like this having uh, cavities uh, like uh, functionalized molecules uh, this uh, they capture the the ions uh, this uh, this type of molecules are showing as a ps sensor in the application uh, this type of molecules are applicable in Uh, like a detection of the R R S uh, reactive oxygen species uh, that in generated uh, some molecules are showing the uh, light harvesting property like this molecule a uh, type of molecule showing uh, like the fluorescence probe like uh, this is a, a sodium salt of the complex that uh, mainly used used in a biocellular uh, imaging cells as a probe uh, in literature uh, uh, like hydrogen molecule hydrogen hydrogen molecule showing some interesting molecules so, like this is a lone pair of nitrogen Uh, nitrogen are used uh, high, uh, high in nucleophile cells similarly this double bond uh, carbonated double bond serving isomerism that is useful in uh, preparing some molecular switches and machine and this uh, 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 lone pairs are useful for the uh, metal coordinations and cation or uh, our uh, uh, ion sensing uh, this uh, uh, acidic protons are uh, for useful for the increase the solubility of the molecules for hydrogen bonding and uh, radical cation uh, uh, anion cation sensing For uh, similarly, some heterocycle molecules also uh, showing uh, a fluorescence probe because this will having the spacer group. Uh, they are useful in uh, active intermediates in various fields like uh, metals chemistry and industrial industrial purpose. 
this ligands act as ligands for uh, 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 various uh, organic uh, light emitting bias materials and uh, this uh, triazole uh, molecules are useful in electron transfer material poly uh, polymers and uh, emitting diodes. We are inspired from these molecules. We have designed some uh, molecules to body free uh, attached molecules. For that one, we are synthesized initially for uh, body free by using simple condensation reactions by in water and uh, boric acid from pyrox and aldehydes. Uh, aldehydes. This got in, uh, got uh, generally 80 to uh, 90 percent DC. For that one, you are complexation by followed by oxidation and uh, complexation by using the heat rate in triadesium. After achieving this one, we have uh, used Wilsmer formulation reagents for the formulations of the this uh, this body fee. In, in 85 percent. For that one, we are achieving uh, key intermediate of uh, body fee for formal. In our hand, we have uh, synthesized uh, the uh, body fee substitute for uh, this uh, body fee substitute heterocycles. For this one, we are using uh, acyl hydrazides for using uh, using acetic acid and ethanol replacing. Uh, in 30 minutes, we get we get hydrazide, uh, acyl hydrazide. For this one, uh, we are using for oxi oxidation cyclization for using as a uh, uh, IBD is called as a diabenzene uh, diabenzene uh, diacetate in a dry system within a uh, within one hour we get uh, uh, oxidizer oil uh, body by this is showing fluorescence uh, fluorescent images uh, later on similar condition we have uh, used as uh, parallel hydrazide so for synthesis uh, synthesis body by triazole parallel so in using the same condition within a 10 minutes we get uh, triazole uh, triazole parallel uh, body uh, these molecules were uh, characterized by H1 NMR and carbon 13 and uh, HRMS uh, stop. Uh, this molecule is uh, showing the sky by that for assisting. Uh, later on we have, seen the, uh, we have studied their photophysical property like we have studied uh, for oxidized molecules. It is showing uh, in, the, in the range of uh, 500 to 500 to uh, 600 that is uh, compared to uh, formal uh, body weight get, uh, getting uh, around 14 nanometer sheet and similarly uh, this molecule we have studied the different solvent study of the absorbent study in, uh, after that we have studied the emission profile uh, for in case of the hexane hexane is uh, going good, good emission and followed by chloroform later on we have studied uh, their uh, the pH study of the uh, effect on the uh, absorbent study of the this uh, body weight dye for that one, we you observe in case of the trifluor uh, acetic acid, uh, this uh, 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 shift uh, showing uh, blue shift. In case of trithyl, uh, in case of the tri uh, trithyl trithyl is showing uh, two nanometer red shift. Similarly, uh, this tri uh, trial 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 body fluid is showing interesting uh, interesting property. And this one, uh, we generally observe that uh, 45 nanometer shift. And similarly, uh, he is showing, uh, showing as fluorescent emission. Later on, in case of the uh, acid condition, uh, in case of acid condition, TFA is showing red shift at 5, 20, uh, 25 nanometer, and in case of the triethylamine, showing blue shift. Uh, after that, we have studied there uh, the ion sensing for using uh, different uh, uh, different ions like uh, halides and nitrate, phosphate, and sulfate. So, uh, among them, uh, this uh, fluorides uh, ions only uh, ions only sen uh, sensing due to pinching uh, of the emissions. And after that, we study the the concentration. We have decreased the concentration of the chloride ions. We observe the, uh, the intensity of the intensity of was uh, decreasing in new band uh, at near to uh, uh, six eighteen nanometers. Uh, that increasing. Uh, finally, I, uh, I want to conclude. Uh, we have uh, synthesized uh, uh, oxidized uh, oxidized uh, diazoles and uh, triazole. The uh, substituted uh, bo body fair ever using a uh, hypervalent iodine or uh, di iodobenzene diacetate from easy level level of formal for formal for current and hydrazones. Uh, these molecules are uh, uh, display re remarkable uh, red shift in 30 to 40 nanometers. And this may show most mean uh, this is a uh, showing uh, remarkable sensitivity toward the fluoride ions. And these molecules, uh, this uh, 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 showing a 0.5 nanometer, uh, 0.5 uh, quantum unit, and this further uh, modification and structural innovations are undergoing. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Dalip Kumar, uh, my supervisor, uh, CSR, for funding VST fees for uh, NMR facility and HRMS 
इन्स्ट्रुमेंटेशन फैसिलिटी बेड्स प्लानिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड आर एस आर डी सी आर टू थाउजेंड जयपुर फॉर गिविंग मी ऑपर्चुनिटी प्रेजेंट माई रिसर्च वर्क संतोष गेव ए वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉक वट इज फुल फॉर्म ऑफ बॉडी पाइल सर डायबो नेवर राइट द एब्रीविएशन इन टाइटल बिकॉज इवन आफ्टर द लेक्चर आई एम नॉट एबल टू मेक आउट वट इज द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ बॉडी पाइल फॉर जस्ट बिकॉज यू आर ए स्टूडेंट जस्ट आई एम गिविंग सजेशन एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज दिस वन फोर फाइव डाय फ्लोरो फोर बोरे थ्री ए डायजा इंडिसिंग ओके इन टाइटल अलग दिखाई रिस्पेक्टिव द फेड वेटर इट इज कंप्लीट दिस इज ए पॉलिसी वेन इट कम्स फर्स्ट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इट शुड बी फुल फॉर्म देन इन द ब्रेक इट एब्रीविएशन देन फर्द यू कैन यूज एब्रीविएशन ओके प्लीज एनी क्वेश्चन स्टूडेंट नो ओके देन लेट अस थैंक संतोष बादली Uh, next speaker is our MSc student. Here, what we do, we in MSc final we give a project to our MSc students, and often the projects uh, projects uh, are research oriented. And in such conferences, we encourage our students to participate through oral presentation or through poster present presentation. And uh, in posters, I found very good posters. and bhagyashree now will speak generation and prepping of carbene from diazotization of 4 amino 1 to 4 triazole good afternoon everyone i am bhagyashree singhal and i am here to present my topic generation and trapping of carbene from diazotization of 4 amino 1 to 4 triazole we are doing experimental and theoretical investigation on this and i am being supervised by dr rk bansal sir okay so let's begin with what are carbene carbene is a molecule having a neutral carbon atom having a valence of 2 and it has two unshared electrons carbene are considered as highly reactive species because they have a deficiency of electrons carbene are basically of two types singlet and triplet as you can see here carbene are sp2 hybridized uh, atoms having three sp2 orbitals and one npp orbital if the two unshared electrons are present in one of the sp2 hybrids orbital that is they are paired it is considered as singlet on the other hand if the two unshared electrons are present on different orbitals that is they are unpaired it is called triplet for many years it was thought that carbons cannot be isolated because they are highly reactive but with time it was found out that case there are few carbons which can be isolated one of those carbon is nhc that is nitrogen heterocyclic carbon What are NHCs? These are heterocyclic species containing a carbene carbon and at least one of the nitrogen atom in its ring system. NHCs have exceptional stability. This stability has been explained as nitrogen has lone pair, which it donates to the NTP orbital of the carbon. At the same time, nitrogen has high electronegativity as compared to carbon, due to which it attracts the NC sigma bond. So due to this push and pull mechanism. NHC has a great stability as compared to other carbenes. Wanzelik was the first one who studied the stability and reactivity of carbenes NHC. NHC attracted much attention particularly after Ordoengo reported a stable carbon. This was the carbon which was reported by Ordoengo. Experimentally we generated in situ NHC from diazotization of 4 amino 1 to 4 triazole. We took triazole and reacted it with sodium nitrite with trifluoroacetic acid and acetyl nitrite was used as a solvent. We maintained temperature zero to five degrees centigrade and diazotization took place and we got the di uh, diazonium salt. 
the diluvium salt on using one of the nitrogen molecule gave nitrinium ion. This nitrinium ion by deprotonation gave the NSC. So in this way we, uh, we generated NSC in situ. This NSC molecule was then trapped using DMAD. DMAD is dimethyl acetylene dicarboxylate. NSC on reacting one of, by reacting with one molecule of DMAD gave, gave this 1,4 dipole. This 1,4 dipole on reacting with another molecule of DMAD gave the product. The structure of the product was then confirmed using IR studies. As you can see here, an uh, absorption band was uh, observed at wavelength 1724 cm inverse, which is due to see there was an O stretching, and another band was observed at around 1205 wavelength, which is due to see O stretching. So these two peaks led us to the confirmation that the product has ester group. Also, we obtained peak for aromatic C level one O stretching. So all these data helped us to conclude the structure of our product. The product obtained was a yellow oily mask, as you can see here. Uh, the theoretical calculations were done on DFT at B3 Ly P631 plus G star level. The uh, digonium salt gave the TS1, that is transition state 1, and the energetics involved here was 23.47 kilocalorie per mole. The transition state 1 then gave the nitrinium ion, which by deprotonation gave the NHC. The NHC by reacting with DMAT gave the transition state 2, that is 1,4 one dipole, which react by reacting with another molecule of DMAT gave the product. These are the structures that have been uh, optimized till now. Digonium salt, transition state 1, nitrinium ion and carbene. These are the frontier molecular orbitals of carbene. As you can see from HOMO that uh, at the carbon center, the lone pair is present and in the P orbital. Also from HOMO 4, you can see that there is delocalization of electron. So from all these data, it was concluded that yes, carbon could be generated for, from diazotization of 4 amino 1 to 4 triazole. And the resulting carbon can then be used as a precursor for uh, generating 1,4 dipole. This 1,4 dipole then reacts, then undergoes 4 plus 2 cycloaddition with DMAD to give the product. With this I conclude my presentation. Thank you. Good.